When I was a little girl, I used to spend a lot of time with my Aunt Beverly, who was my mom's best friend. And we would be in the car traveling places, and she told me this crazy story once. I was very little. I don't even know how old I was, but she was telling me the story about somebody else. It wasn't about her or anybody in her family, but Aunt Beverly told me that there was... You know those big trucks that carry the cars on them, like to go to the to the new car lot? There was one of those cars probably on the Long Island Expressway or something, and she said that a friend of hers or somebody that she knew had died because that tractor trailer with all those cars had toppled over and killed somebody. And I mean, I'm, I literally don't remember the details. This is all I have of this memory. But I realized today I was driving home from a client and I realized I still have that story swimming around in my head because there was one of those trucks on 690 and I was like, oh, I got to be careful of those things. They tip over all the time and they kill people. And that's my story about these trucks. So whenever I see one of these trucks, I remember the Aunt, the Aunt Beverly story. I don't know any of the details except that. I don't know how old I was. I don't know if it's actually true or not, but I always remember I have to be on high alert because those things topple over all the time. I have never seen one topple over. I have never heard a news story about any of them toppling over. They look pretty secure to me. And it's also like 40 years later, right? Like technology has improved and I still have this story that those are dangerous. So I go on high alert. That's a story that helps me. It's a story that keeps me safe and I wonder if you have a story that comes to your mind when you see something like from a story from a long time ago. Now, that's a helpful story. It puts me on high alert. But I also have several kind of tragic stories from when I was little that, that, that don't keep me safe. One of them is this story. I was, uh, I was, again, young, a ballet dancer. I used to probably go to ballet three to four times a week. And I was a good dancer, but I had curves and boobs and hips and thighs. And there was this little dancer, her name was Jennifer Gould, and she would this like teeny tiny little perfect dancer's body. And she made fun of my thighs for like every time we would do like a shuffle, a shuffle, a shuffle. This was probably tap class. My thighs would blah. And I heard her making fun of me. And that was it for that. And I still to this day think about that moment in ballet class when the shame like just, I got so hot and embarrassed and I think I had to go to the bathroom and, and deal with my brain at that moment. But that's a story that comes back to me a lot. That's a story that harms me, right? I remember this thing that she probably doesn't even know who I am anymore, but I remember her name. I remember what she looked like. I remember what she said. I remember her hand going over her mouth while she talked about me. And I remember like how the shame that I felt. And then I had another story, uh, because I was a ballet dancer, I have really ugly feet from being wrapped up in toe shoes for years. And so I remember as a teenager, my friends would tease me about how ugly my feet were, and I would bury them in the sand on the beach. And it was kind of like this joke that Jen would bury her feet, and she had really ugly feet, and she, I didn't, not, I didn't wear flip-flops for my, pretty much my entire childhood until I was 30. So you've got similar stories, right? Some of them help you and some of them harm you. And you might have a story about who you are able to become next, especially if you're a woman who has an idea that she wants to make into a business or something she wants to grow, some change she wants to make. Your story might be, no, 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 I'm just A and fill in the blank. I'm just a nurse. I'm supposed to be a nurse for the rest of my life. I'm a lawyer. I can't, I can't do anything else. I've already paid for my law degree. I'm an accountant. I work for a company. I'm a teacher. Like you might have a story that I'm just a fill in the blank and I can't do this thing. Or maybe your story is, oh, so my maiden name is Grim. Grims, Grims are poor. We were always poor. We've always been poor. Working is really hard. So I had a lot of money mindset stuff because of my stories about money and who Grims are and how hard they have to work. If your story is available to you, if you can access it, it might be really worth investing, investigating. Because when you see the story, only then can you bring light to it 
and then it disappears. I just read an article this morning, actually this is reminding me, an article about a young boy who was walked in on in a middle school bathroom to the point where, and he was shamed because he was looking at his uh, genitalia when he was like in sixth grade, he was like doing something and just looking at himself and, and an eighth grader walked in and embarrassed him and the rest of his life he spent in um, shame and addiction and like he, it really went like very far. When he became much older and after a lot of therapy, he called this guy and connected with him and said, hey, do you remember this event happening? And the guy didn't have any recollection of it at all. And he actually had never told anybody because it just didn't matter. But our stories are so heavy and they, they help us define ourselves and sometimes in really harmful ways. You know, I remember my brother laying on the couch saying to me, like, who are you to start a business? You, you've never done that before. And I was like, yeah, I've never done that before. I probably shouldn't do that. Who am I to do this? And it could have really kept me stuck. And so I'm wondering, is there someone at some point in your life who maybe made an offhand comment or maybe made a very pointed comment to you and you've now got a big story about it? The first thing I just want you to do is say, is this story, like, let's talk about this story. Let, let me say this story aloud, right? Like, or maybe I just write it down or I say it to myself. But the first thing is say the story. And then you have to say, is it true? Does this help me? Does it matter? Is it moving me forward? Because a lot of my clients, they want to bring their business to life, but they have a lot of stories around why they can't or who they are and who they want to become, but they're, they're terrified. So if this is you, I wanted to just say, what's the story? And is it helping you or harming you? Because it might be keeping you from bringing a brilliant idea that the world needs to life. It might be keeping you from making the money that you know you deserve to make and want to make, but you've got an old story like, oh, I'm a teacher and I have to stay in the system for 35 years so I can get my $24,000 at the end of 35 years in retirement. Is that helping you? Is that story really true? So I'm curious, does this resonate with you? Do you have an old story? And maybe your story helps you, like my Aunt Beverly's story. Like I go on guard when I see those, those trucks with the cars. That's, that's helpful. But you might also have some harmful stories that are keeping you from moving forward. And I would love to know, what might your story be? Do you have a helpful story? I'd love to hear it below. And um, if, of course, if you have a harmful story, please drop me a line. I would love to talk to you. If you don't wanna talk in the open space, send me a message. My name is Jen Liddy and my job is to help women develop their business ideas, get them out of their head, up off the couch, into the world. And if you're a woman who's already got a business, but your business is running you, the other specialty I have is like, let's reel it in, create some systems, create some space. But if you've got a story that I can't start my business and I can't keep doing it this way, but I don't know how to get out, I'm, I'm here to help you revamp that story. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the hearts. I'd love to hear what your story is and I'll check back in with you soon. Bye.